Dudes and dudettes, how are you guys today? This is going to be the hardest and uh, most serious video I've ever recorded. And it deals with something that I went through last year, a little around the middle of 2017. And it deals with some very painful occurrences and moments in my personal life that formed memories that I know will haunt me for the rest of my life but I'm sorry that this video isn't going to be as entertaining as my normal ones but my goal for 2018 one of my goals is to be more personal on this channel and be more straightforward with you guys you know and bring you more sincere content and this is going to be very personal so I hope you guys don't mind me sharing this with you. And it's going to be here on YouTube for me to always look back on and remember a time in my life that wasn't very positive. Depression is a very, very serious thing. It's not something to be taken lightly. And if you know someone who's going through any kind of depressive feelings or if they're down or if they're struggling to be happy, be the person you know they could be, then don't hesitate for once one second to reach out and help them because you have no idea how much that could mean to them when I went through depression it was brought on by a series of very very unpleasant occurrences um, in my personal life I talked a little about this in my my last video my 2017 retrospective but I wanted to record an entire video just about this and not that many people around me know that I was going through this it's because I kept it sort of a secret like even though it was kind of obvious it was clear I still didn't really like whenever I could I just pretended I was okay so no one would ask anything but there were certain people who did notice that I was down and it's just the thing is when 2017 started I was hunting for a job and I was really optimistic that I would find one but it was really hard and it got harder and harder thing is there's an economic crisis happening in Brazil right now which is leaving millions of people be them you know qualified or not for jobs unemployed and I went I wound up going the entire year without finding one like I looked really hard I tried sent resumes everywhere um, I even went to a few interviews but you know, ultimately, I didn't get a single position in any company. And without money, without a job, I can't pay for my college tuition. You know, I can't continue studying photography, which is what I do outside of YouTube. So, you know, professionally and academically, my life at the moment is going nowhere. You know, at the moment, at the time, you know, it still isn't. But, you know, at the time, it wasn't going anywhere at all. And, you know there was a lot of pressure you know to find a job and i'm 25 now you know and i was 24 at the time without a job with no college well incomplete college and my relationship in my home with my parents wasn't very good you know like sometimes we get along but other times we disagree a lot i disagree especially with my mother in particular we don't see eye to eye and we never talk because there's no talking to her. She's, I have the kind of mother who screams and doesn't listen. You know, she criticizes and judges but never listens. So my relationship with her in 2017 hit an all time low and my father did nothing to help me. You know, he always takes her side in defense. So in my own house, even though I live with my parents, I feel completely alone, isolated, and sometimes unwanted. So it's why I always go to other people's houses, other family members, my friends, you know, I do other things, I go out, I photograph, I record videos for YouTube, anything to sort of feel important, you know, and not having a job and not going to college obviously puts a lot of strain on my relationship with my parents because I'm, pre I'm sure that it's not easy having a 20 still like having a son who's 25 and still living with you and depending on you isn't a very good thing even though here in Brazil it's actually common it's really common for people to live with their parents until they get married and go live with their spouse 
since I was raised in the United States, in my head, I feel like I should have left my parents' house when I was 18. So it's hard for me to adjust. And not being able to talk to my own parents is obviously a problem, even when they are part of the problem sometimes when I feel down. And of course, they help me with a lot. You know, they, they obviously they pay my bills and my mom cooks for me. My dad always, um, you know, helps me out, giving me cash whenever I need it, though I try to make my own living with photography. But on a personal level, we just don't get along because we're really different from each other. And, well, it puts a lot of pressure on me mentally. And I actually can't have a relationship because, you know, my parents, like, they're the kind of parents who think that they can control every aspect of my life. So, like, all of my relationships in the past, I hid from them, you know, and I knew why I should have. Because the first relationship, the first girlfriend I ever had, who I brought home and presented to them, you know, they just wouldn't leave us alone. And a lot of things happened that I don't want to get into, but it also puts strain on that as well. Uh, I had a cousin who was six years old who in December died of a bacteria, not in December, in last year, sorry, because it's about the spectrum in December. She died last year of a bacterial infection and a child dying is already bad enough when it's a child close to you and it's a family member a loved one it just it, it's really painful and i didn't take it very well obviously i wasn't particularly close to her or anything but she was still family she was still a child and that was a pretty heavy loss i had done a photo shoot with a model like a few like i think the week prior to that and that also didn't go too well because she turned out to be a terrible, terrible person, and she really, like, sucked out all of the patience, you know, and positivity and happiness out of me because the photo, like, nothing was good with her. It, it was up until then the best photo shoot I had done, and it quickly turned into the worst, and I didn't enjoy it at all. So that was also in the same week, a lot of things were happening. Sometime later, um, I lost a friend of mine who uh, I had known for eight years, but I had quite unfortunately discovered that for all of those years, or a good part of them, or at least the more recent ones, he was he was talking down about me behind my back, and I caught him lying to me about something, and he was just being someone fake. He was pretending to be my friend, and at the same time, he was going behind my back and saying negative things about me and turning people against me and it just wasn't good you know and I never really got along with a few particular friends of his I have a neighbor who really tried to make my life miserable um, that year because a lot of bad things were happening to her and for some reason she always put me at the center of it like someone would do something bad to her and if there was no evidence of it being anyone like she would just throw it at me. She would like hold me responsible for being the one who would be doing all of these things, you know, to make her life worse. And she would um, go to this friend of mine and also my cousin and talk smack about me, invent stories that weren't true and like make the people around me dislike me, you know. And she studies psychology, so she obviously has this lip talent. She probably knows how to psychologically manipulate people. So there was that too. And it was around this time that with everything that was happening and one particularly nasty, almost violent argument with my mother, that was when I officially fell into depression. I'm not entirely sure if it was clinical depression. I deny that it was. If it turns out to be true, I'll probably still deny it. I'm in denial that it was clinical because I don't think you can get out of clinical depression on your own. I think you have to see a doctor and take certain medications to get out of that. But I deny that it was clinical, but it was still very, very strong. I fell into a very deep depression. I laid down in my bed for 
several days. Could have even been weeks. I don't even remember how long it was. I spent like over a month feeling really bad, but I think about only a week in bed doing nothing. Like I would literally just wake up, eat, shower, and go to sleep. You know, I didn't feel like doing anything. And, you know, people would try to talk to me, you know, like my father would come into my room and say, hey, buddy, you all right? What's wrong? Come on, talk to me. And I'm, I'd just be like, no, I'm good. And just like zone out, you know, because I didn't really want anyone to be near me, you know, people would call me, friends would call me, family, send me messages on WhatsApp, and I just wouldn't answer. I just really wanted to be isolated because that's how I felt on the inside. You know, I felt emotionally abandoned by everyone. So I wanted to also be alone on my own, you know, physically. And I'm not entirely I'm not entirely sure when the suicidal thoughts began, but when they did, it sort of like it there was a point when it kicked itself into overdrive. I really truly precipi precipitated offing myself. I wanted to kill myself, take my own life and just end it because it didn't really feel like there was anything that could happen. You know, like no job, so no chance of ever going back to the United States because I have to have a job to get my visa. No college, so I wasn't really being anyone at the moment. No chances to go anywhere for new photos, no photography work happening, friends abandoning me, you know, people who I thought were friends just letting me down. There was also a relationship with my parents at an all-time low. There was also this situation with my ex-girlfriend. I don't want to get too specific into it, but let's just say that we reestablished contact with one another the same ex-girlfriend who cheated on me by the way and something very serious brought us back together her sister had an operation to remove a brain tumor and i found out about that and it was that almost as if at that moment everything stopped like all of the bad things in the past they just came back, you know? And I mean, all of the bad things in the past, they went away. Like every every bad thing that my ex had done to me, I forgot. I went to the, I called her, you know, I said, look, I know your sister's going through a hard time and your family too, I'm here for you guys. I actually wound up going to the hospital and seeing her sister, seeing her, her whole family there. It was actually a pretty touching reunion until she started messing with my head she started saying that she still had feelings for me and coming on to me and only after that did she say that she already had another boyfriend you know so she made me want her she came on to me made me sort of try to win her back and only then did i find out she was with someone else so in case you haven't connected the dots she cheated on me and then try to cheat on her current boyfriend with me. She's a very, very messed up person, you know, and don't want to get too much into detail, but I wound up going to her house where it all happened. I met her current boyfriend and she completely turned on me. She reversed the roles and said that she didn't feel anything at all about me. And it was basically all a lie. So that really crippled me too. And taking just all of that, I didn't really feel like living anymore, you know. Felt like life was just a waste of time and I really wanted to just commit suicide. And knowing fully well that I would go to hell, I didn't really care because like, life on earth was worse than anything. <sighs> and I remember that I was in a really dark place for a while. Like my head was shrouded in darkness. My inner demons, we all have them. And mine were just coming at me from all directions, pulling me apart from the inside out. My mind, my brain, my heart, my very soul were being ripped apart to shreds. And I just wanted it all to stop. And there was one person who did... Um, like it was Ironically, it wasn't even someone who I see personally. It was a friend of mine who's living in the United States. And I talked to her one certain day, I guess she kind of 
picked up on the fact that I wasn't feeling too good. So she asked me what was wrong and I told her everything and, you know, like we talked a lot and she, at least for a while, sort of pulled me from the void a bit. She kept me from thinking all of these suicidal thoughts and wanting to go away and die. And it worked for a while. I, she, I, I did feel a little better for a while until Chester Bennington died. You know, that was the breaking point for me because Chester Bennington was literally my idol. He was a, my hero. He's, he saved me from myself many times through his songs. And I know he was a really good person, even though I never met him personally. It's almost like through his songs, I got to know him a lot. And Linkin Park represented a lot of my... A lot of the, the lifestyle choices I made came from Linkin Park, who kept me, when I was younger, from doing things that I would have regretted. You know, their songs literally changed my life from my adolescency, my teenage years, to uh, my adult years. They still do. Still to this day, I listen to their songs and I feel empowered. But after Chester died, it was like... That was like the limit, you know? It was like... It was terrible. It was horrible. It was like... It, it was a... I've never met him in real life, but it was like I lost someone close to me in real life. It was like losing a friend or loved one, a family member. It was really, really, I can't even describe it, you know? And that really sent me over the edge even more, especially when I realized that Chester, he did what I wanted to do. He felt like the world wasn't good enough and he just left it on his own terms. And... After he went, it was even worse for me. I started having even more suicidal tendencies. I wanted to hurt myself. I wanted to just go into a room and never come out, just die in there. And it seemed like no one cared. And I think that I think that around the middle of the year, like about a month after Chester died, I was horrible. I was in the worst state of mind. It was when everything came to fruition. And I think it was officially at that moment that the devil got hold of me. It was that I felt like I was, you know, like I felt like I was ready to go to hell. I felt like I was ready to die, take my own life because It was just, it's hard to explain, describe. I've never tried to explain it in this much detail, but if anyone has gone through depression and has thought about suicide and you know what I'm talking about, it feels like there's no way out. It feels like it's over, you know? It feels like there's nothing else you can do. No one can help you. You can't help yourself. There's no way out. And you feel like it's the only way to escape all the pain. And some time ago, like it was recent actually, about last month, I sort of had an epiphany. Like, well, everything is bad right now. Um, I spent Christmas with my, with my family and I looked around at them all, all so happy and laughing and smiling. There were times when I just sat down by myself, just inside, I was feeling so conflicted. Like, if I were to die, like, would these people really miss me? Would my family miss me? Would my friends miss me? Like, I haven't done anything notable in the world. I'm not rich, I'm not famous, not that many people know that I exist. So what have I done? up until this moment in my life that would make me be remembered and missed by people. And it was sort of an epiphany. It made me think, well, maybe it's not the right time. Maybe this isn't the way. Maybe it's not what I have to do. Maybe I'm supposed to live. Maybe I shouldn't die. And for a while I was like, okay, I'm still, cause like after I got out of depression, it still left certain traces. Like 
I'm still not fully over it. You know, there are certain times that I just feel down worse than other times and everything comes back to me. The memories of 2017, they come back to me and I just, you know, I fall again. And when I will completely and fully get, get, get through it, I don't know. But there are still remin remnants of the deep depression in my head right now. And, and you know, I guess that's, um, I guess that's kind of how it works. You know, it takes a while to, it takes a while to completely get over it. I think I've covered pretty much every detail and I, I understand that whenever you're feeling depressed, like there's always someone you can talk to. I probably had, I had one person, but like, I know the people in my life who care about me. I know who they are, but sometimes I don't feel like saying any of this to them because I just don't want them to worry, you know? And there are people who are successful and happy and they have their own lives to be proud of. And I don't, so I don't, it's like they're always going to tell me the same thing that life is worth it that this and that and then and because they have good lives and i don't so i guess maybe uh, i have to find the right people to talk to i'm not sure how long this video is guys but i think i'm going to end it here because i just don't know what else to say and it's strange you know the feeling of depression is very strange because it feels like you're buried alive. You're in a coffin and you're buried. And like at any time you can get out of the coffin and unbury yourself. It's not hard to escape, but it's like you want to stay in that coffin. You want to stay buried. You know, you want to just lay there for all the end of time. You don't want to come out because when you're in that coffin buried underneath, no one can see you. No one can bother you. No one can do anything. So it's almost like a relief and the feeling is, you know, it's, it's hardening on the soul because everything goes black. There's darkness everywhere. And that's how I was, you know. Um, yes, that's it. Like, I know who my friends are and I love you guys. But, you know, sometimes I just don't want to talk about this. So, yeah, I'm sorry that this video is so monotonous. There's no music in the background. There's no intro. There's not going to be an outro. It's just me talking to you guys, to those of you, to anyone who cares. This is what happened in 2017. I think that's it. Uh, I'm gonna go now. Um, this is Igor Chesterfield signing off for now and I promise that my next video will be more entertaining and I will work on it and everything will go back to normal, okay? Thank you for watching and for those of you close to me, thank you for understanding.